This is a wonderfully soft oil-based cake that doesn't require any dairy of any sort. It's perfect for people with allergies or on a budget. Not only is it a cheap cake to make, it's easy and quick and you can make it any flavor. You want to grease and flour a cake pan or line it with parchment paper. I prefer this method because it's a lot easier and it has a nice rise to the sides because you're not greasing it and you will have a really nice tall cake. You take a piece of parchment paper slightly larger than the cake pan and you fold it in half and then fold it in half again. Now you can just trace a circle if you like, that works too. Once you have it folded in half like this and you have four equal parts, you're going to make a triangle shape by bringing this point over to the next point. And you just want to fold a crease just like this. And you're going to do that shape one more time. You're going to make another little skinny triangle. And once you do that, you want to find the center point of your pan and you're going to cut straight across. If you aren't confident about finding the center, you can use a ruler or you can just feel free to be brave and just kind of eyeball it like I am. Sometimes you're a little short, sometimes you're a little over. You can adjust as you go. I like this method because you don't have to take the time of finding a pencil that is safe to use for baking and then cutting out all this extra work. It's just great because it uses up scrap paper a lot. Do that for both pans and set them aside. You all are really going to appreciate how easy this cake is to do. You got to watch it or you're going to miss it. First you're going to get some eggs and you're going to scramble them together like this. Next, you're going to add your oil in, and you can use anything from canola, vegetable, coconut, even melted butter. Now you're going to grab your flavoring. I'm using vanilla, but say, what if you like some strawberry? Go ahead and use strawberry extract. Now I'm going to add in my sugar. You can use any kind of sugar you like. You can use natural sugar, brown sugar. Use brown sugar. Add in a teaspoon of cinnamon for a really nice flavor. Then you're going to keep mixing until that starts to dissolve. And if you wanted to, you could mix your flour and your baking powder and salt together ahead of time, or you can just dump it all in at once like I'm doing here. If you want to make it even simpler, replace the baking powder and salt and flour with self-rising flour in equal amounts. This is an easy, easy recipe. You could make this in a stand mixer, or you can use a, a blender, or you can just do it by hand like I'm doing. I'm telling you, I can make these cakes like all day long. You can double this recipe, triple it. They freeze excellent. They keep for about a week on the counter. You can eat them plain or you can ice them. And it will be a real nice thin batter like this. I personally like to use a scale and get a really good accurate measurement between my cake pans, but you can eyeball it. It's not a big deal. Again, you can make cupcakes out of this. You can make really large cakes. You can use small cakes. You can make a loaf pan. My favorite is a loaf pan because those are just really great to give away as gifts and you don't even need to ice them if you want. Another great thing is these things self-level. You can give them a couple taps if you want to bust some air bubbles, but it's not necessary at all. It's going to bake anywhere from 25 to 35 minutes, a little bit longer for a loaf pan type cake and a little bit less for cupcakes around 20 minutes or so. Now, if you have cheap pans, you may have some cracking, especially if you overmixed your batter a little bit, but it's perfectly fine. You can just level that off and cut it off and just eat it as a snack or just ice over top of it. Not a huge deal. It's a very lovely cake to make if you're trying to lose some weight as well because there's not a lot of fat or sugar in it. Let them sit five to 10 minutes before removing them from the pan. If you have a nonstick pan, please don't use a metal utensil like I'm using. My pans aren't nonstick, so I'm not concerned about it. You're then going to flip them upside down. If you use the parchment paper, you need to remove it and then re-invert it right side up and let these cool completely before you ice them if you're using icing. If you need a dairy-free icing, I will include a couple recipes for you as well. I'm not going to show you how to ice cakes because quite frankly, as you can see, I am pretty terrible at it. I know my limitations. There are some excellent tutorials on how to decorate cakes if you want to get that far involved. I can teach you how to make an excellent tasting cake. I can't teach you how to decorate one. I wish I could, but I just know that I am not great at it. It is a beautiful cake to share with friends and family. As you can see, Maggie really approves of this recipe. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Here are the ingredients if you want to follow along. 
Thank you for visiting us at jacksonsjob.com and as always, happy baking.